can you do with science and charge on computer electricity? My name is Karen. I'm one of many educators here at the Museum of Science. And just real quick before we get started with our show, I do want to bring everybody's attention to the brief warning. I put up on both of those screens, which very basically states the show is going to be right, the show is going to be loud. It's all the lightning show after all. If you have to see me put on these very lovely and stylish headphones, or if you hear me make mention that I'm about to put on these headphones, that probably means that something loud is about to occur, and you may want to plug your own ears. If you are coming in your group, not the biggest fan of bright flashes or loud noises, now would be an excellent opportunity to locate your nearest exit. And if you do need to use that exit during the show, just do so carefully. It will be relatively dark in here. The doors will not lock behind you, so if you might need to leave for something but then want to come back in, feel free to do that as well. And with all of that out of the way, who is ready to see a brief introduction to what we're going to be talking about today? Thank you. 
here when I turn it on is actually three giant conveyor belts sitting at about 60 miles an hour, actively carrying negative charge from the basement all the way up to the aluminum dome. Because it's just one type, those negative charges are repelling as far away from each other as possible, looking for the easiest pathway to the craft. So you must be wondering, if we're collecting all of this extra charge, why aren't we seeing or hearing anything exciting? Well, keep in mind, I refer to this machine as an air-insulated magnograph generator. Turns out air, just like lots of other materials, does a very good job of slowing down electric charge. Air is a good insulator. With the machine being surrounded by air, right now there isn't an easy pathway for those electric charges to take. So what I need to do is give those electric charges an easy pathway, and perhaps in the process find out what happens when we separate out electric charge on such a grand scale. Probably not a bad idea, look at those ears.
Lightning and thunder come from the exact same source. The only reason we tend to see a bolt of lightning before we hear that same bolt of lightning is because light travels much faster than sound. If a lightning bolt were to strike directly next to you, you would see it, you would hear it, and unfortunately you would feel it all instantaneously. Because the third thing going on when that electric current passes through the air, creating the electric spark, it heats the air up. A natural lightning bolt can actually heat the air to over 10 times hotter than the surface of the sun. These much smaller electric sparks don't reach nearly that.